Welcome. Thank you for joining me in this state-of-the-art uh, report in film directing for games and animation. My name is uh, Remy Ronfar. I work at uh, the University of Grenoble in RIA and NSAD Lab in Paris. Okay, the, my presentation to today will start with a few words of motivation and I will introduce some important concepts in film directing. Like, especially découpage, mise en scène and montage. I will then take you on a guided tour of film directing techniques that have been proposed in, in the past and I will classify them according to various criteria so that you get a sense of what they do and how they are useful. Then I will share some thoughts on the perspectives for future work and uh, I will uh, have a short uh, time for questions and answers. To start with the motivation, uh, in, uh, in 1960, uh, Freddy Hitchcock was dreaming of a machine in which he would insert the screenplay at one end and the film would emerge at the other end, complete and in color. This was a discussion with François Truffaut, reported in uh, Truffaut's book. At the time, it was certainly meant as a joke. Uh, since 1960, computer graphics and animation have progressed so much that it becomes useful to ask whether it is possible to build such a machine or at least a computer program that would ins where Hitchcock could insert a screenplay at one end and the film would emerge at the other end. This seems uh, uh, more likely than it was in the 1960s. And that involves going from a screenplay to a storyboard to an animation and to film through film ed editing. So that involves uh, several steps. Another grand challenge was reiterated by Mark Riddle during the workshop on intelligent cinematography and editing in 2014 uh, at my invitation. And the challenge that Mark Riddle proposed was to build an intelligent system that autonomously generates a feature length animated movie that would be rated at least 20% on uh, uh, the Rotten Tomatoes uh, site. This is a uh, challenge that, in his view, should include narrative generation, script writing, so the system should write its own script, and intelligent cinematography in, into animation, which is what I mean by film directing, including what the characters do, the acting, the stage directions, and the media composition, all location scouting, stage production, cinematography, and editing. Interestingly, since that uh, challenge was proposed, uh, there has been some progress in narrative generation. Uh, you may have heard of the Sunspring movie that was directed by Oscar Sharp and Ross Goodwin in 2016. This was produced from a script that was written by a uh, recurrent neural network trained on science fiction screenplays. And the network is called Benjamin. We can read an example, uh, a short extract of the Sunspring screenplay. Uh, and this was acted and directed by human actors and uh, directors to produce this short movie. Here is the movie corresponding to that screenplay. What do you mean? Well, I, I don't know anything about any of this. So, so the stage directions are a little bit curious. Uh, then what? There's no answer. And the narrative itself is a little bit hard to follow, but it uh, was um, the first uh, movie written by an artificial intelligence program. And today we are looking at the other side of the challenge, which is how could uh, computer programs direct that screenplay and make a 3D animated movie from, from it. This has not been demonstrated uh, yet. So, the techniques I'm going to present uh, can be classified based on what they use as an input. So, there has been work on film directing from existing footage. And this is useful for automatic cinematography and film editing, as attempted by Lars von Trier in his, with his automavision system used in uh, his movie The Boss of It All. It has been used by the IBM Watson team uh, to produce a trailer for the movie Morgan. And it could be used in the future to generate what uh, Francis Ford Coppola calls live cinema, the creation of a movie in real time in front of a live audience with all cinematographic effects. Uh, it, 
if we increase the ambition, we can also look at methods that do film directing from existing animation, and that may be the uh, most important application for in computer graphics and animation. So this includes the production of machinima. Again, I'm giving several examples, famous examples here, using either game engines or um, a virtu uh, immersive uh, virtual uh, environments or uh, the SIPs for uh, game sandbox, uh, game engine. Uh, it can be used for cinematic replay, and there's a good example here, of the GTFO replay that was produced by the Unity Cinecast uh, system, which is a f one example of a film directing uh, method, comp computational, which shoots the, the, the gameplay with many cameras and chooses the best sequence in the end. And it can be used, and it is important, for creating third-person games by computing cameras and editing them together while the action is taking place. And finally, if we want to meet the challenge, the Hitchcock or the Riddle challenge, we need to introduce methods for film directing from an existing screenplay, which means producing the animation and um, making a movie out of it. And that includes text to movie. I'm showing example frames of uh, movies created by Extra Normal Text to Movie uh, in 2009. It was used in art, an art exhibition uh, at the Tate Modern in 2011. And on the bottom row, I'm showing the case of interactive drama, which raises the bar even higher, because uh, a movie must be created in real time, while the drama is being written through the effect of interaction between the audience and the non-player characters in the, the system. Uh, the uh, well-known example of that is the facade uh, game, an interactive drama which reacts to your actions. Uh, Virginia is another example, and Wolves in the Wall is an interactive drama taking place in immersive virtual reality where the actions you perform physical in the physical space can have an effect on the uh, montage and the timing and the um, continuation of the movie itself. So the movie is made based on your action in the physical world. So what is film directing? I would like to introduce a decomposition of the task into three subtasks. Going from the screenplay to the storyboard is the decoupage part. From storyboard to animation, I'm calling this mise en scène and from animation to film, I'm calling this montage. So in other terms, decoupage is the choice of camera shots that need to be produced. Mise en scène is the staging of events for the camera in each camera shot. And montage is the ordering and length of movie shots used in the final movie. Well, this is a, an unusual um, um, set of terms borrowed from the French. It is uh, useful and precise and can be used to better understand the task of film directing. I refer you to the, the essays on film form, uh, which contains uh, a historical account of those three terms uh, and their use in film studies. What is decoupage? The choice of camera shots that need to be produced. Uh, it is basically consists of two things. One of them is the segmentation of the action uh, described in the screenplay. Uh, to find what needs to be uh, put into images. Uh, actions in the screenplay are decomposed into beats, according to McKee in his book on screenwriting, or they can be decomposed into prose storyboards, according to uh, Nicolas Proferes, who's a teacher of film at Columbia University. In both cases, what the segmentation produces is a list of shots that need to be produced. The second part of decoupage is to choose the screen compositions of each of those shots. And an important concept was proposed, and which is very much used in film directing, is the Hitchcock rule. The Hitchcock rule can be stated as follows. The size of character on screen should be proportional to its narrative importance in the story at any given moment. While it may appear simplistic, it is a very useful principle to follow because it relates the narrative aspects and the story aspect with the uh, shot composition aspects and there are many variations to it but um, it needs to be uh, introduced and taken into account as an important uh, concept. Uh, in the decoupage it is 
I would like to stress that there are many shot compositions. The choice is quite large. You can have a shallow or a deep depth of field, and in the case of a deep depth of field, you can have more than one plane of action. You can have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. And uh, the uh, shot composition uh, can become complex. Uh, camera movements can also uh, change the composition. Uh, even inside a, a shot, there can be panning, tilting, zooming, dolling, and, and, and craning that modifies the shot composition. The shot subjects are often referred to as one shots when there is one character on screen, two shots when there are two characters on screen, and so on and so forth. And finally, it's important to know the vocabulary of shot sizes, which describe um, the, the screen size of each of the characters. So in the case of one character, as you can see here in this example from Hitchcock's movie Suspicion, uh, you have full you go from a full shot to a medium long shot, medium shot, medium close-up, and a close-up. What is mise en scène? The mise en scène is the staging of events for the camera. So it includes the art direction and character animation, and I will not dwell an awful lot into this. This is an entire chapter that's already covered by most of a, a lot of work in computer graphics and animation, of course. It includes the blocking of actors and cameras in each shot and the choreography of actors and cameras in each shot, the synchronization of movements so that they compose uh, uh, a shot that implements the required the, uh, the shot as required by the decoupage. Finally, what is montage? Can we define it? Montage is the ordering and length of movie shots used in the final movie. So that means, the, compared to the uh, decoupage, there, there can be changes in the ordering and the length of the movie shots compared to the camera shots created by the decoupage. An important goal of film directing in terms of montage is to avoid continuity errors that were theorized by Dievel and Van der Becken, uh, categorized as follows. First order errors are jump cuts, uh, shots that look almost the same, but there's a slight difference that looks like an error. So this should be avoided. Second order continuity errors are violation of spatial cognitive representation of 3D scene that make, uh, make it hard to uh, re uh, understand and represent the, the 3D scene through that sequence of shots. Examples are changes in the direction that a character is moving, or changes in the direction that a character appears to be looking at. And finally, the third order error is a violation of, or a lack of uh, link, the chronology and causality. In that case, the, uh, the the two shots may appear to be unrelated, and it, it causes uh, difficulty in understanding uh, the movie. It may cause false inferences, because the audience is always looking for to infer uh, chronological and causal links. Another useful reference for understanding montage is the list of criteria that was put forth by Walter Murch, who is uh, Francis Ford Coppola's film editor in, uh, in his work. Uh, he's also a theoretician of film editing. What makes a good cut, according to him, are six criteria of increasing importance. First one being 3D continuity in the real world, where people are in the room, what their relations are to each other, which is important in cases um, where the, the decoupage the, the mise en scène has produced different versions of the events. The two dimensional space of screen uh, should respect 2D continuity where people appear to on the screen, where the lines of action look and movement project on the screen is important and it's even more important than the real 3D uh, location. Eye tra trace is the, uh, an understanding and respect of the audience focus of interest before and after the cut, where people are looking uh, is important to. The, the way a cut works or not. Thirdly, uh, fourthly, rhythm. It is important to cut at a moment which is both right and interesting. If a cut comes too early, there has not been enough time to read the preceding shot. If a cut arrives late, there may be a, a, a release of tension and interest. Story. Cutting in a way that advances the story. There should be a motivation in the next shot that makes sense and advances the story, and finally, emotion. Uh, that is um, 
an important concept in Watermark's approach to film editing, to cut in a way that is true to the emotion of, of the moment. Uh, and that accounts, according to him, to half of the quality of the shot. So let's see how this uh, relates to film directing. Uh, there are many ways that uh, découpage, mise en scène and montage can be organized together. The simplest way, the most straightforward, is cutting in the head, a technique where découpage and montage uh, uh, happen exactly as planned. So the montage is exactly a reproduction of the uh, initial découpage. This is dangerous in, in many ways because the, the mise en scène can be inefficient or uh, can be failing and some of the um, prescribed shots may not happen exactly as planned but uh, it is a, a technique that is favored in a traditional animation and also by some filmmakers. The three-take technique is a variation over that where um, there is an overlap between the different camera shots uh, chosen during decoupage so that each action is in fact shot at least three times. So you, this gives more freedom to choose when to cut from one camera shot to the next one. The master shot technique is a case where there is one master shot covering the entire action in one continuous take and then there are some details close-ups that are added uh, uh, to give uh, more uh, possibilities in the uh, film during the montage part. In that case, the, the, the découpage, the shot list, uh, contains the master shot and all the details. And uh, many of them will not be, uh, be used. And finally, the extreme case is the multi-camera technique where each action is covered by a large number of cameras producing a large number of shots and the découpage um, contains many options and the montage must select between uh, those multiple options. We'll see that all four, four techniques are useful in uh, automatic film directing. Going more precisely in what happens in animation and games, in animation, and especially in traditional animation, the storyboard is drawn during pre-production as part of the découpage, and each camera shot is then planned as a separate scene, even if it's showing the same action. This works by first producing layout animation that places the, the camera, then character animation in the camera view. Together, the, those can be seen as mise en scène, and the montage is more or less a reproduction of the uh, storyboard, so the montage is exactly as planned. Things are very different in video games because they work in real time. Player can change the action and can take control of the camera. The non-player characters can also change their course of action, so animation must be generated in real time. Mise en scène is in real time. Typically, the player watches the active camera while the other cameras are generated in the background, so that will so decoupage some must be performed in real time as well, and camera changes need to be decided in real time. Another Case, common case in video games is when the animation is recorded with multiple cameras. So again, uh, the uh, decoupage can, can consist in multi creating multiple cameras and then replayed as a movie by choosing the appropriate montage. And this is useful for applications such as cinematic replay. So now that I've introduced all the important concepts, the possible applications, I would like to take you on a tour of film directing technique proposed in research in the last 40 years, starting in 1980 and taking us towards the 2020s. So I've chosen 30 papers that cover 40 years of research from the 1980s to the 2020s. And the organization, as I explained, is through the three tasks of découpage, mise en scène and montage, how each technique covers or does not cover those three steps, and what kind of methods they develop, starting from declarative methods that have been popular in the past, to procedural methods that attempt to run in real time and are often pre-programmed, through optimization methods that have become more common in recent years, and learning methods which more or less train from examples and, and the model as an optimization problem that can run in real time. So we can see a progression 
over time from declarative to procedural to optimization and to learning. So going back to one of the first works by John Carroll, the transformational generative cinema grammar, they John Carroll starts with the progression from meaning to event structure to sequence structure and to film, which will be important in all papers, by way of semantic rules, transformations, and what he calls photographic rules. So semantic rules says that an event is decomposed into nominals and actions, and an action can have a preparation and a focal action. A transformations from an action is to either decompose the action into sub-actions or displayed as a shot. And importantly, he draws distinction between shots that display an action and deletions which make a decision not to show an action which can be implied by other actions. Photographic rules are what we would call in computer graphics uh, uh, CGI and going from a shot description to a sequence of images that would be mise en scène. So uh, here is the organization I give for each paper, the type of method, here it's declarative, the story is made of events and actions, the decoupage is elaborated through the writing of a short grammar, the mise en scène by a photographic grammar, and the montage by a scene grammar that organizes the shots into sentences. So this happens in post-production, this was at a time where there was no computer graphics and the domain is ambitiously narrative cinema. Next, uh, Gilles Bloch, during his PhD thesis in 1986, built the montage machine, which is based on natural language generation methods. He draws the parallel from methods such as text or discourse grammars that were developed at the time, and uh, attempts to propose natural movie generation with a rich representation of scenes and shots, and it takes into account the rules of continuity and this continuity of movement, gaze, screen, that are that come from the work of a film theorist Noel Birch. So the montage machine is again a declarative method. The story is represented interestingly with conceptual dependencies from the theory of Roger Schenk, which has a few uh, action categories, uh, a small number of action categories. The decoupage in this case is predefined, but the, the mise en scène comes from live action video, so it's already mise en scène. It's focusing on montage with pattern matching. It is performed offline, and again, the, na the domain narrative cinema with many examples drawn from the subgenre of Western movies. A, a few years later, uh, and Drucker presented the cinema system, which is a very interesting and innovative uh, system which takes into account many aspects of film directing, uh, bringing together 3D interaction, animation, motor controls, uh, visual narratives, keyframe camera movements, automatic presentations, in order to generate short sequences in animation that di uh, display a, st a story. So here we see a, a match on action going from a uh, character sitting until we see him seated. Cinema is a landmark system. Uh, it is procedural. It is fast. Uh, there is no representation of story or decoupage. It's focusing on the shot and uh, montage, match, match cuts through the lens uh, mise en scène, meaning that there is an automatic translation from the uh, this decoupage to the animation. It works in real time and it creates synthetic narrative film studies. Esplanade is another system that came the following year where uh, an Esplanade is an expert system for planning animation, design and editing, so planning it's more or less decoupage, and design is mise en scène, and editing is montage. Using communicative goals and filming continuity constraints, it is based on the work of Stephen Sharp with seven, seven basic scene structures. Interestingly, they are high-level scene structures, not uh, microscopic rules, principles of separation, parallel action, slow disclosure, familiar image, moving camera, multi-angularity and master shot. Each of those techniques can be implemented to generate a sequence of shots, scenes, sequences and films that display a story. Esplanade is a very ambitious system, it is declarative. The story is represented by a script annotated with goals, communicative goals. 
The découpage is rule-based. The mise en scène is not described. It is performed by a real-time engine. The montage is also rule-based. It is offline and it targets industrial scenes and narrative games. It is a system that goes beyond many of the other state-of-the-art in its use of high-level film directing techniques. Um, at the same time, uh, EDIC is a system for creating trailers. The shot representation is based on, uses the media stream system which in turn was based on Birch and Block, which I mentioned previously. Montage is seen as an uh, example of, of a problem that can be solved by the general problem solver with goals and operators. So GPS is a planning me uh, method. Operators are, include preconditions, an add list and a delete list. It is an interesting uh, it has an interesting idea that the preconditions in the planning system represent what needs to be shown first scene of a sequence, the add list represents what needs to be shown in the next scene of the sequence, and the action of the GPS operator represents what does not need to be shown, what is supplied by the inferential activity of the viewer during the cut between the first scene and the next scene of the sequence. This is an innovative and interesting idea. So ID, to summarize, is declarative. It works from an annotated script and takes into account annotated movie shots as an input. The decoupage and the mise en scène are pre-computed, and the montage is performed by forward planning using the GPS. Uh, it works offline, and it generates a movie trailer. Candroid is another system proposed by Drucker, which I mentioned it uh, as well as cinema because the techniques are different. The story is executed as an input script in this case, so it draws on the cinema system and adds a story element. Shots are generated by a network of camera modules, so each of the camera modules more or less like the cinema system I mentioned previously. And the cinematographic knowledge comes from the book by Katz, Film Directing Shot by Shot, and includes a number of recipes. So it is more or less an optimization, the first optimization method. Uh, it doesn't have a representation of the story, but it, and it has a scripted decoupage. But again, it uses through the lens constraint optimization for the mise en scène. Montage is again scripted. It is works in near real time and it targets a virtual football game, with, uh, which is mise en scène automatically. Right. So in 1996, this is a paper that has been uh, cited many times. A landmark paper in the history of film directing and computer graphics. It was a C-graph paper in 1996 by and, and co-workers. Here, the virtual cinematographer uh, performs decoupage, mise en scène and montage in real time based on a representation, a simple representation of the story as subject, verb, object events. The system reacts to those events using film mediums, which are adapted from the book by Arijon, the grammar of the film language, which provides camera setups for all uh, actions, possible actions, of so all triplets. And the montage is programmed as a hierarchical finite state machine, uh, organizing how, in any given setup, it is possible to switch from one camera to the next. Uh, by using those prescribed idioms and finite state machines, he and co-workers achieve real-time performance and, this, and demonstrate the creation of short movies in a game engine. The approach is procedural. The story is represented by subject, verb, object, triples. The decoupage work is using predefined setups, the so-called film mediums. The mise en scène uses fixed cameras and possibly panning shots, but it could be um, uh, extrapolated to more complex camera uh, movements. The montage is done by fine state machines, uh, again part of the film mediums. It works in real time and targets the creation of third-person games. Closely associated with the virtual cinematographer is the declarative cinema control, cinematographic control language by Christian Sol and some of the co-authors of the virtual cinematographer. It solves some questions that were left unanswered by the virtual cinematographer. It's a planning system based on the virtual cinematographer, which whose goal is to produce a film tree, an annual tree of possible movies and to choose using heuristic search what is the best solution in uh, post-processing. So it's a way of improving the results of the cinematographer. It is declarative, it uses 
subject verb object triples as a representation of the story. It is a generate and test approach to the decoupage where all possible decoupage uh, made are uh, computed and evaluated. Uh, the mise en scène is done through using through the lens camera control. The montage is the exploration of a film tree, it is offline and targets the creation again of third person games in the style of Alone in the Dark, Retro Fighter or Fade to Black. Constraint Cam by Bears and Lester uh, is an ambitious project to perform multi-shot presentation of interactive fiction in real time. It is based on a rich story representation which includes the goals of characters and epochs in the situations encountered in the fiction. It has plot points such as transportation from scene to scene, visual identification of characters and objects, and pursuits. It is a declarative system where the story is represented by epochs, character goals, and plot points. Decoupage is performed with a cinematic goal selector, which translates narrative goals to cinematic shots. It has a constraint-based system to perform mise-en-scène, another constraint-based system to perform montage. It works in real time and it works in the domain of 3D interactive fiction with an example taken from the domain of cops and robbers in fiction. In 2000, John Funch proposed cognitive cameras, a reformulation of the film idioms from uh, the virtual cinematographer as logic programs based on the situation calculus. That approach is interesting and original. It makes use of fluent. The fluent is a property of the world that changes over time due to actions. And the situation is a history of actions. In their in a Funch system, film mediums are complex actions, meaning reactive programs that can generate movies for new situations. It is a declarative approach. It, it has a a rich representation of the story in the situation calculus with fluence and actions of the story world. It has decoupage axioms that generate camera actions from the world actions. It uses primitive actions pre-computed uh, mise-en-scene operators and it has montage axioms that decide on the, the ordering and length uh, of shots. It is a real-time system because the decoupage and montage are reactive programs and it works in the domain of prehistoric world or undersea world and more generally artificial life. Another uh, original system proposed by Tom Linson in the same year has cameras and lights be virtual actors built more or less like uh, autonomous actors with sensors, emotions, motivations and action selection mechanism. In their systems, the cameras choose shot values to maintain relations between characters, sets and participants, and to express one of six emotions, happy, sad, angry, fearful, surprised and disgusted. Actors can also request shots from the, the cameras. It is a, an original system that emphasizes emotion, it is procedural. The story is made of motivations, emotions and actions of all actors. It is broadcast uh, generally during the, the performance. The decoupage can is, um, works more or less as a generate and test. Uh, the mise en scène uses camera and lighting with some prescribed effects. Uh, the montage is performed by action selection. It works in real time in the domain of artificial life. That system was shown at SIGGRAPH in 1998 and 1999 and was one of the landmark systems running in real time in front of a uh, live audience. 2002 a planning Cinematography is a paper by Kennedy and Mercer that makes different choices, addresses different issues. It is built of three subsystems, shot maker that chooses the shots from the action descriptions, performing decoupage, a rhetorical structure theory planner, which generates sequences of shots according to the animator's intentions, and a renderer which creates animation for the selected sequence and performs mise-en-scene. In their case, uh, they change the ordering by making the montage precede the mise en scène. It is a declarative language that uses actions, communicative goals, themes, and moods expressed in the description logic as a representation of the story. Uh, they perform both decoupage, mise en scène, and montage explicitly, each with their own structure. Uh, they work offline and they target cartoon animation. 
they are a good candidate for text to movie authoring. The digital movie producer, it was proposed by Miyazaki in 2003, it, it is an expert system that encodes cinematographic rules, film idioms, in, uh, as uh, rules in the clips and cool uh, dialect of Lisp. The decoupage and the montage are sold together by planning with the Rete algorithm. Uh, and it produces an abstract shortlist, and the shortlist is encoded in a dedicated language, TVML, uh, for animation. So it's a declarative language where the story is represented in a scene graph, abstract scene graph, the decoupage is rule-based, the mise-en-scene is script-based, the montage is rule-based, it works offline, and targets movie-making in shared virtual environments. Glamour is a system that works from uh, existing videos and generate video documentaries with synchronized voiceover narrative. It works from annotated still images and communicative goals. It is based on rhetorical structure and rhythm. It is a very original system that takes uh, as input still images, produces false camera movements, synthetic camera movements, pan and scan, also called Ken Burns effect. It takes as an input a rhetorical tree and a discourse plan. Um, it performs decoupage using, uh, in parallel, a natural language generation planner and a video planner. And it performs the montage by uh, synchronizing the rhythm of discourse with the, the voice and the video. It works offline and produces short video documentaries. It introduces aspects of rhythm and synchronization that are not taken into account in other systems. Mario is a system proposed by Friedman and Feldman in 2006, where the input is a timeline of action and a floor plan, and the output is a list of camera parameters. It is a rule-based system that takes into account many of the rules of uh, film editing, like the line of action rule, the 60-degree rule, prevents jump cuts and has default preference and assumptions. It's one of the few systems that was evaluated by expert filmmakers. It is declarative, it is rule-based for the decoupage and the mise-en-scene, and it has a system of constraint resolution for the montage part of the generation. It works offline and produces Latin telenovela, a Latin telenovela called Dulce. And it is an interesting system that follows uh, an ambitious uh, program. Camboat uh, is another landmark paper. Uh, it is the, fir the first paper to um, model uh, the problem of film directing as an optimization problem and introduces very uh, useful uh, concepts uh, that will be uh, used in future work. The input script in that case is decomposed into dramatic action or beats. For each beat, the system computes all possible blocking of actors and shots by making use of a data structure of stages where blockings can be organized to produce shots. It then chooses the best sequence of shots using dynamic programming so it can be summarized as an optimization method where the story is a linear sequence of dramatic beats. The decoupage computes one shot per beat. The mise-en-scene is performed externally by a real-time game engine, Unreal. The montage is performed by backtracking through dynamic programming to generate the best sequence. It works in post-production, it is an offline system, and it produces, its goal is to produce machinima. The neuronal editor agent by Passos in 2008 is one example the first example of learning part of film directing directly from examples. In their case, they use a cinematographer agent that generates all possible shots in real time, and then they train an editor agent which learns to choose shots at runtime for training sessions using an editor's choice feedback. It was tested on simple race game. It is a learning method. The story is simply represented with scene geometry. There's no account of decoupage, mise en scène, only montage with a feed-forward neural network. It works in real time, and its domain is restricted to race games with three cameras, a chasing camera, a front camera, and a high-view camera, but it, um, it is a first attempt at learning an editor agent with uh, neural networks. DarkShack is a system proposed by Jala and 
Abna Chala, during his thesis with uh, Robert Michael Young in 2010. It is targeting interactive drama. It takes as input character action of different kinds, speaking, moving, reacting, and produces an output camera action, like a pan, a toy, or crane. They take a discourse planning approach using a rich story representation with a physical world representation, rhetorical coherence, and temporal consistency. They evaluate their system, interestingly, with the quest a model of story understanding. So, in their case, they evaluate the, the system based on how well um, the audience can understand the story told uh, by their system. Uh, uh, illustrated it with an example from Rope, where they show the relationship between camera actions and story world actions. In the, the, uh, the, the case of the Rope movie, the arrows indicate the start times and end times of camera actions. Their system is declarative, uh, takes as input mood, intensity, tempo, character emotions, causal links. The decoupage is rule based, mise en scène is performed by the game engine. The montage makes use of a partial order causal link planner. It works offline and produces machinima in uh, the genre of rubber, uh, in the, the example of a robbery story. The virtual director by Asa in 2000 and co-workers in 2010, the generate and test approach for camera selection and editing. So it performs both the decoupage and the montage part. It maximizes the correlation between human motion in the scene and in the camera, measured with statistical tool, canonical correlation analysis. We can see here all the selected cameras and the, all the computed cameras generated by decoupage and the selected camera which is on, on air. It was validated by user study. It's a procedural model. Well, the story is represented by character motion. The decoupage is performed by CCA, the mise en scène with film idioms. And the montage, it makes use of something they call accumulated view erosion, which means that you only stay in the camera for uh, so long. There is some sort of erosion of the interest of the audience that causes the camera changes when um, either they are needed because the action changes or the camera shot is too long. Um, it works offline and generates highlight cinematics typically with single character action back or back and forth interaction between two persons. It is an, a nice system that uh, has been evaluated favorably and that, has, that is uh, well grounded by uh, rules for decoupage. It, it's one of the few papers that introduces rules of decoupage, although they are based on motion uh, at the exclusion of other characteristics. The camera behavior trees were proposed by Markovitz and co workers in 2011. In their system, camera automatically positions, pans, tilts, zooms, and tracks events occurring in real time while obeying the standards of cinematography. They use behavior trees, encoding of the film idioms, so it's uh, related to the work of the virtual cinematographer, with goal direction and hierarchical abstraction. Behavior trees are a variant of um, finite state machines that make it possible to encode uh, more complex uh, behaviors with uh, uh, better co control of the coherence of the chosen path through the different states and transitions. They are stored and triggered by smart events in the virtual world. So this is a procedural uh, method with smart event representing the story, uh, reactive decoupage, a predefined mise en scène, not the topic of the paper, uh, a montage which is performed by behavior trees, program behavior trees, it works real time and was demonstrated on rolling ball games and, as well as navigations and conversations. The high-level dynamic camera by Suchan and Bat in 2012 is a system that controls cameras and microphones, ro robotic cameras and microphones in the meeting room with a probabilistic action re recognition implemented with an HMN. Uh, it is interesting and I include it in my survey because it has stochastic camera actions, cut, pan, tilt, zoom, guided by choices and preferences expressed in a variant of the situation calculus. The system it was not complete at the time of writing, it was not evaluated, but it contains 
Uh, some interesting possibilities. It is declarative. To use this situation, calculus representation of the story, but expressed in probabilistic logic. It is, has a rule-based découpage and montage, as well as a rule-based pan tilt zoom camera control. It works in real time and is limited to video recordings of meetings, but could be extrapolated to other uh, cases as well. Steering behaviors are cameras controlled by uh, steering. They are basically an uh, extrapolation of the Boyd system by Reynolds to cameras. The camera Boyds react to crowd events while scouting and tracking behaviors. So scouting behaviors perform the, is used in, to perform decoupage and the tracking behavior perform the, the mise en scène and the montage. Camera positions are computed from behavior forces, orientations, from behavior talks. So that, that's a, um, the novelty of the steering behaviors that you can move and uh, watch in different directions. They provide coverage of crowd events suitable for a live news broadcast. The method is procedural. The story is represented by behaviors and targets. The decoupage is performed by scouting, uh, looking at what happens in the crowd, and is also by tracking behaviors. There is no notion of montage. Each camera generates its own rushes, but it could be Added. It works in real time and create, is applicable to multi use of virtual worlds, interactive tri mode, or cultural heritage applications. The virtual director by Merapti is a, a system, a hidden Markov model of a movie script. They, they were considered that a hidden sequence of shots produces an observable sequence of events. So they train an HMM model from real movies and scripts to generate new shot sequences for new scripts. They, their system is powerful but requires a finite vocabulary of shots and events because they use discrete HMMs. They can be seen as a learning method. The translation, the decoupage and the montage are learned from uh, examples of movie scripts and uh, movies. The mise en scène is uh, not treated. The, they work with external uh, animation. Uh, it is not the focus of their paper. It works uh, offline and uh, is applicable to creating machinima from uh, existing animation. Continuity editing for computer animation, paper by Galvan and in my team. Is a semi Markov model of film editing which evaluates shots of all durations from parallel events. It takes as input a story of speaking, reacting, moving, and manipulating actions and uses dynamic programming and an evaluation of chunk cuts, continuity, motivation based on the Hitchcock rule, and rhythm, imposing a log normal distribution. It is a a method that explicitly prevents a large number of continuity errors, like jump cuts, continuity errors, non-motivated shots and cuts, to provide uh, an overall optimal solution, and it's applicable to cinematic replay in narrative games. So it is an optimization method. The story is represented with parallel actions and uh, their roles. It allows for multiple actions taking place at the same time. Um, it is a generate and test approach to decoupage where a large number of solutions are generated. Um, it does not uh, include mise en scène. It is focused on the montage with a semi Markov model. It works offline and creates a 3D animation reproduction. It was demonstrated on the reproduction of a movie scene from the movie Back to the Future. It can work by adding narrative actions. Uh, in a separate paper, it was coupled with a narrative engine, uh, ID Tension. In that case, the decoupage was uh, motivated by Hitchcock's rule, and the mise en scène was, was image based. Again, using a semi Markov model applicable to interactive drama. Cametron by Hertz in 2016 uh, is a different uh, approach. It uses a causal probabilistic model of events and shot in a um, probabilistic uh, uh, logic. So it's again a variation of the film idioms ID 
uh, the interesting part is that they use a sampling approach to choose likely cameras in a near real time rather than optimal camera paths. As a result, their solution is non-deterministic. It was tested on lectures with two speakers, three cameras, three actions, walking, speaking, and pointing. Uh, we can view it as a declarative method, but that takes actors and action as a representation of the story. That performs montage from existing cameras, so no decoupage and no mise en scène, by sampling from a probabilistic logic, and it uh, it works in near real time at four frames per second for three cameras, two frames per second for six cameras. It is applicable to live action video production. Um, this can include live cinema applications, and it could also be adapted to other situations. Computational editing of dialogue scene is a paper uh, that was presented uh, in 2017 by Leek and colleagues at the SIGGRAPH conference. It uses a mixture of uh, hidden Markov model uh, film mediums, but in doing so they reinvent the notion of a film medium a little bit, as I will explain. They solved uh, the, the montage problem with dynamic programming, and they take as unit a dialogue line. So it is really dedicated to the, the filming and the editing of dialogue scenes, uh, taking a number of uh, taking an input script and the number of video takes. They choose the best takes and the best um, uh, sequences of uh, video takes to uh, convey the conversation. Film mediums in their case are not pre-computed solution, as in the virtual cinematographer, but they are. Uh, special purpose rule based uh, hidden Markov models, and the, the uh, user of the system can tune the importance of the different idioms. So, an idiom is really, in their case, uh, a, a rule such as avoiding jump cuts, changing zoom gradually, emphasizing characters, intensifying emotions, and so on and so forth. Um, this is a reformulation of the film idioms, which is uh, quite uh, useful, but leaves uh, the tuning of the different uh, idioms to the uh, user. The system is based on uh, optimization. It takes as input a transcribed speech and a, uh, a script. Um, the decoupage is was done previously. It's given to the system. The mise en scène is also given, and they focus on the montage with a mixture of hidden Markov models. This works in post-production, and the domain is limited to dialogue between two actors. It is a recent paper that could extrapolate to other situations as well, and is quite uh, promising. Automated staging by Luan is a paper that addresses a very uh, different um, part of the uh, film uh, directing problem. Uh, it is uh, staging, as the title says, and the, the mise en scène. It works from the specification of the, the shot in terms of a prose storyboard language, which is uh, a simplified representation of what the camera should see, and it includes extension for a camera and actor placement. It is limited to two characters in a static scene, but can be used to generate camera layouts uh, for uh, many shots in the Back to the Future scene that I mentioned before. It is a declarative approach. It takes as input an extended post-storyboard language representation of the story, more or less a decoupage. It generates simultaneous staging of actors and cameras based on that decoupage. It does not include montage. It works offline, and its domain is interactive drama. It is complementary of uh, other approaches. Write a video is a system proposed by Wang and co workers in 2019 that generates a video montage from a voice over narration and a video database, a database of existing videos. It uses visual semantic matching uh, to choose the videos from the database and match them to the voice over narration. Uh, the movie is generated by dynamic programming. So it is again an optimization method, takes as input the theme text and the video repository, perform the montage by vi visual semantic matching between the theme text and elements of the video repository. It uh, computes a montage by dynamic programming, taking into account many rules of film editing. It works offline and creates video documentaries from um, narrations. The intelligent camera 
finance state machine proposed by PARC is a modern implementation of the virtual cinematographer with an event model that includes thematic roles, so it's a slightly uh, richer and uh, easier uh, more general, including locations, tools, targets, destinations. It was tested with tiny jumps with limited success. Um, uh, during a qualitative evaluation showing some of its limitations, but I included it in the survey uh, because it uh, targets the new application of immersive VR, so it's a procedural. It allows parallel actions with roles, locations. It uh, chooses the uh, decoupage based on the Hitchcock's rule, performs the mise-en-scene with the very set machine and the montage, and it works in real time, and the target application is new and interesting. Finally, example-driven virtual cinematography, the paper by Jiang and co-workers, that was shown at, uh, presented at SIGGRAPH last year, it learns camera motion from real movies to propose uh, co complex and aesthetic camera motion in uh, film directing. And to do that, they retarget the camera motion to new animation sequences. The system is based on actor poses, movement and actions, um, either in the example videos, they use training examples, and in the animation during generation. This is, the network is trained as a hybrid deep neural network that combines short-term memory with gating. So it's a learning approach that uses the actor positions as a story, input to the story, focuses on mise-en-scene, uh, the generation of the shot, the decoupage and the montage are not included. It works in near real-time with a slight delay and is useful for imitation of real movies in 3D games because it is able to generalize learned uh, um, uh, camera mo movement to new animation cases. So now that we've uh, reviewed methods from in the history of film directing in computer games and animation, we ask the question, where do we go from here? What is the next step? What are the future directions? And of course, we go back to our grand challenge of real-time film directing from text to movie. We've added real-time because it appears to be so important. Those are really different challenges, competing challenges. They are hard to uh, result in a single method. And what we are seeing is a large collection of approaches that all move forward in the right direction, but are not sufficiently integrated. So the question is, can we find a method that combines all the benefits of past work and meets the grand challenge? I'm seeing some reason to discuss uh, spatial and temporal complexity, expressive film directing, learning film directing as future directions, important future direction, and I'm also raising the problem of evaluation of film directing methods. So in terms of spatial and temporal complexity, it is very important to uh, look at the scope of the methods that have been proposed in the past. Uh, some of the questions that need to be asked are how large is the space of the story, how many locations does it have, how long is the time of the story, the diegetic uh, time. Many of the past methods have looked at short stories where diegetic time is more or less similar to film time. This raises issues that have not yet been discussed at large. Other spatial and temporal complexity issues are how many scenes in a movie, how, how many scenes can the, the system handle. How many shots in a scene? Many examples are in, in fact made of scenes with very few shots and have limited temporal complexity. You can also ask how many actors in a shot. Many methods, especially the film mediums or, um, approaches, uh, are based on an enumeration of all possible shots and that makes it uh, difficult to handle shots with many actors. So it's possible to enumerate one shot, two shots, maybe three shots, but if you include more actors, then the enumeration becomes too long and the problem becomes combinatorial. So we have this issue of the combinatorial complexity of film directing, which has not been resolved yet. Another thing is expressive film directing. I think the 
probably the most important direction will be to focus on story and emotion. Uh, if you remember Walter March's uh, six reasons that make a cut work, uh, methods in, proposed in the past have been able to resolve three-dimensional space of action, the two-dimensional space of screen, the eye trace, the rhythm, but they only account for 26% of, of you know, what makes a, a cut work according to Walter March. Most importantly is to cut in a way that advances the story and that goes for the montage part but also for the decoupage and the, the mise en scène. How do, do you uh, take decoupage and mise en scène and montage decisions that advance the story? A story representation, as we have seen, is a much debated issue and it's uh, difficult to provide a, a clear cut answer. The, the second and most important uh, cue for uh, a, a cut according to what much is emotion and we have seen that very little work has been devoted to the control of emotion cutting in a way that is true to the emotion of the moment this is still difficult to uh, measure and to quantify and to take into account so I, I would say that we are a quarter of the way <laughs> and uh, work uh, remains in the on the side of story and emotion to move the, the remaining three quarters of the problem. Another direction for future work is learning film directing from examples. This appears to be a promising direction since it makes it possible to combine optimization approaches that have been proposed in the, in the past, which run well, which uh, solve problems in an efficient way and take into account many of the uh, necessary aspects, but run offline, and real-time methods. Um, when you train, for example, you are basically building a real-time optimization machine, so this is very promising, but there are difficulties and I don't foresee um, uh, a deep learning approach that would directly translate the, an input screenplay into a sequence of images um, in uh, the forthcoming years. Why is that? Uh, first of all, we have data sets, large data sets, huge data sets of movies and screenplays. But we don't have the intermediate steps. The, the decoupage is missing in many cases. That makes it hard to learn efficient models. We've seen that decoupage, the choice of, of shots, is um, a very important issue that controls the style and the effectiveness of film directing. So I would say that in order to learn film directing, we would need more uh, data sets of movies with their storyboards. And uh, the figure here shows uh, some uh, attempts we are doing in, in my team to describe uh, existing movies in terms of their prose storyboards and to replicate those prose storyboards as animation and I think more work is needed uh, in this direction so that we can separately learn to perform the, the decoupage of an existing screenplay then learn to perform the mise en scène of an existing decoupage into an animation, and finally learn the montage from uh, ex existing uh, takes and camera shots. I would like to emphasize that montage, and especially continuity uh, style of editing, could be learned if we had data set that included the footage that was not used in the final movie, but this is not the case. So we are in a state where we must learn from positive examples only, and this is more, more difficult. Uh, the learning mo montage will be easier when we can generate footage, uh, uh, synthetic footage, uh, and compare them with the selected footage in the examples. Finally, end-to-end -end learning will most likely be proposed in the years to come, but I would tend to think that it will not be capable, not un until a very long time, to take into account the important aspects of story advancement and emotion, that is, large-scale structure of the movie. And this is why uh, I would tend to favor uh, uh, learning film directing step by step and by 
separating the steps of decoupage, mise en scène and montage. But this is a personal view and I would be happy to discuss it and to be contradicted in this opinion. Finally, the problem of evaluation is important and it is difficult in the case of film directing. How do we evaluate the quality of a movie? This is of course difficult. Relies on a golden eye, you have to ask movie audiences, um, movie experts, film students, and you can ask them questions about the quality and also the effectiveness of uh, film uh, directing. Effectiveness is a worthwhile avenue uh, for future research in the evaluation of film directing. And you can think of effectiveness of the way the story is told, how well is it understood, and some researchers have taken that approach and I think it should be followed in uh, future work. It, it is a, a good approach. It may also be applied to uh, cases uh, not in fiction film but also in training film uh, the, uh, where the, the effectiveness of the training can be tested um, uh, or in um, a education application. Um, the effectiveness of the different steps, découpage, mise en scène, montage, are difficult to separate. And so I would say that uh, whereas work should be focused on separate, separately devising methods for, for those three tasks, evaluation will always uh, confront the three aspects and there is a need for integrated method that can be evaluated. Finally, there is a lack or a need for, of, for film directing competitions. Many uh, areas in deep learning today are guided by competitions where researchers share the same goal and compare the results on the same uh, goal using the same data set and sometimes using the same codes for evaluation. There is a need for that and that would greatly advance the state of the art in, of film directing in the future. I would like to thank you for your attention and I would like uh, to I would be, like to welcome questions and answers and I um, would be happy to open a debate in this area of uh, film directing in computer graphics and animation. Thank you.